when you see something that is not right, not just, not fair, you have a moral obligation to say something, to do something. Our children and their children will ask us, what did you do? What did you say? We have a mission and a mandate to be on the right side of history. Income inequality has divided this city. For children born poor here, 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 it's clear it's not too pretty. They are facing some of the worst odds of growing up and being anything else but poor. And yet Atlanta is home to 13,000 technology companies. Aerospace, telecom, cybersecurity, mobility. FinTech, BizTech, MediaTech, all these economic opportunities are right here, here, here. So what is pretty is that in, in our city, city we, we have, have one of the, the highest employment rates for STEM-based jobs among all the United States. And I plan to get one. Me too. We view technology as an opportunity to be the great equalizer. So what we're trying to do is make sure that our young people are not left behind in this tech revolution. And so that is why at the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, we're helping to build the next generation of engineers, scientists, and tech experts with the 100 Scholars Robotics Alliance, enhancing educational and economic opportunities and improving the quality of life for Atlanta's African-American youth. We are not using kids to build robots. We're using robots to build kids. It works. It gets the hearts, it gets the minds, it gets the passion of kids that want to excel at something. So I started this program. What if we could take the power of sports and entertainment and the power of technology and make the content developing the muscle hanging between your ears? We're gonna make it an after-school activity. No quizzes, no tests. Just bring the right attitude and nobody leaves without being inspired. My senior year was the last year before my high school was integrated. And there were a lot of people who were upset about the change. It was just a lot of anger. My robot, I was building him. There were science fairs that I wanted to participate in. And the last one was this Junior Engineering Technical Society competition at the University of Alabama, but we were the only black kids there. The Dean of Engineering was the host. He said very little to us. People are not being as nice. I was very nervous, but Lonix won first place. It just could not be denied. First, it's more than robots. It is the ultimate sport for the mind. It's about self-respect, teamwork. We now span from preschool to the end of high school, and there are literally an unlimited number of jobs, careers, and whole new industries coming if you have the capacity to deliver value through STEM, through engineering, through mathematics, through problem solving. One difference between our sport and all the others. Ours would be the only sport where every kid could turn pro. After graduating high school, I earned a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and then a master's degree in nuclear engineering. I worked on the stealth bomber, went to work at NASA's nuclear space programs, on the Voyager project, a Cassini project, which went to Saturn, and I have an invention on the Galileo project that went to Jupiter. I would go home in the evenings and tinker with my own ideas. The Super Stroker was the number one selling toy in the entire world. And now I have my own company. I'm working on advanced energy technologies to help save the environment. And I'm working with kids in a robotics program because I get to mentor and be a role model and provide facilities for the kids to come in that I think could have a profound impact on their life. What you see is what you be. The story about if they see it, they can be it, it's not a myth. There's an enormous need that exists to provide underserved students opportunities to utilize their brains and their talents in endeavors other than athletic and entertainment. Sport of the mind, thinking, using your brain to create, to invent, and giving students an opportunity to be involved in building a robot is something that has enormous potential. You're learning teamwork and communication. Leadership skills, cooperation. Mechanics, wiring, soldering, coding of the actual robot. Time management. You need to have perseverance. Be considerate. Problem solving, critical thinking. Collaborate, think outside the box. Brainstorm the best ideas about what to implement on the coding aspect as well as the mechanics aspect. It made me realize that yes, you can imagine anything, but next you have to figure out how you you want to get it to work. So you got to know which each part can be used for. The design, the program, I learned how to make CAD models on the computer. How can you turn this robot 
and to functioning close enough to like a human being. A major part is to have a business plan in their communities. Hosting events. Creating presentations. The social media aspect. Putting up photos of our accomplishments over the years, and that really helped to draw in potential sponsors. It's not just building robots, it's about real world skills, professional careers, and college pursuits. The 100 Scholars Robotic Alliance first programs and the work that the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, Dr. Lonnie Johnson, have endeavored on is dramatically involved in transforming our communities on the front lines of the careers of the future. Technology, science, engineering, math. This program doesn't have any students who are here because of parents making them come. Our young people just want to make the robot run, accomplish a task. And along the way, they don't realize quite often that they're reading, they're thinking, they're measuring in a fun and exciting way. And when they put one piece to the other piece, put the motor on, put the wheel on, and then they put the right command in, and then they utter, my robot. Something is unleashed in each one of them. They're empowered to really realize that they can put something together. They can actually imagine themselves building robots that will traverse Mars. I would like to build a robot to do other things that humans shouldn't be doing, so then no one can get really hurt. I want to replace some of the buildings to get more people to move in, help grow more greens, more trees, to improve my neighborhood. One day I can invent an air cleaner for Mars, so astronauts won't have to worry about the limited air supply that they have up there. Inspire people to wear a mask if another pandemic breaks out. Cybertronics adapt the human body to replace ligaments or organs or any part of the body that may need to be replaced where you don't have to feel like you are less than a whole person. As a kid, college was not an option in my mind. To make it to 18 was the beautiful goal. It's a lot of violence, drugs. Both of my brothers were gang affiliated. I despise their actions. Even though they did what they did, they made sure that I didn't get dragged into their lifestyle. I had to choose a better path that would bring happiness for me and change the generations of my family to come. But being involved with the Wanja Scholars and being involved in the Project Success program has motivated me to be a more outstanding young man. I, I gained acceptance of myself because you will get ridiculed for being smart. And here, this was an environment for me to show off how smart I was and to flourish. The 100 Black Man provided me with a scholarship to help towards college. I pursued uh, mechatronics engineering in particular because of robotics. That was the happiest moment of my life because he is the only one of my sons to graduate from college. Jameson made it possible for me to buy this house and he's helping me raise his nephew. After being involved in this program, my mom, brothers, everybody's willing to help out more in the community. Anything they need me to do, I'm gonna make it happen. The mission of the 100 Black Men of Atlanta is to improve the quality of life for vulnerable youth in the city of Atlanta. We're an organization of community leaders and titans that have come together to make a difference in the community that we come from and that we serve and that we live in, because if not us, then who? Our roster begins with Hank Aaron and it ends with Ambassador Andrew Young and it has a bunch of leaders in between to say we have to be the ones to help resolve some of the issues in our communities because we were once those young people. Our cornerstone program is Project Success. It's an academic post-secondary tuition assistance program. Sixth grade now all the way through 12th grade. And we're not just only focusing on academics, but we're focusing on everything else that's gonna make that student well-rounded so they can be successful in the real world. And it's a mentoring program. 90 or 100% of our students are single parent, first-generation college students, and our members fill that gap. We not only tell them, but we show them how to become a scientist, we show them how to become a doctor, we show them how to become a lawyer. We've impacted over 500 students with scholarships through our program. I graduated from the University of Georgia and now I work in news full time as an on-air talent. Project Success really prepared me for where I am now through the various Saturday school programs, ACT prep, college tours, and just being able to be a part of an organization to meet so many powerful black men and frankly, women. I can look up to these people and say, well, they did it, so I can too. Uh, we do a lot of work over at Best Academy, and it is one of the most challenging zip codes in America. The highest dropout rate, the highest teen pregnancy. A lot of people will leave them behind. They won't think about them. They won't go back and invest in that community. However, this school has stood as the shoulders of our young men that really want an opportunity to change their lives. We've had young men go to Stanford, the MIT. We've had kids all over the country out of Best Academy go to the schools of their choice. 
They see the skyscrapers. They don't know what professions are there. So we have to make sure our kids are prepared, they understand, and they've exposed to what they're getting into. The Career Pipeline is something that the organization just started this past year. It's a nine-week educational program. Then after that, our ultimate goal is to pair those students up with a company. The biggest program that we have is our Robotics Alliance. And COVID has amplified the importance of this tech revolution because a lot of jobs are going away. But you know what? There's gonna be artificial intelligence. There's gonna be machine learning. There's always gonna be computer. There are gonna be apps. There are gonna be programs. And so we can equip our young people with the skills necessary to go into those areas, those industries, those spaces. They will always be successful. One of the things I noticed with Dr. Johnson and the 100 Scholars was how they promoted robotics from elementary school all the way through high school. There were a lot of students out there who weren't getting the basic fundamental skills, and there were a lot of schools who weren't supporting it because of the cost. When I came here, I started a brand new program. The 100 Scholars were very supportive in helping me get it started. As far as the competitions go, it's very hectic. You have a lot of people walking around the pits, asking about the robot, asking about the team. The stands are filled with cheers of the crowd. You've got parents, team members, classmates, extended family, CEOs, and employees from big companies who come out to scout the team members for internships and different programs. The robots in the field are running MCs, rallying up the crowd. One, go! And they're off and running as the 100 Scholars slam into the side wall in the neutral zone. It's got the energy of a rock concert. It's got the excitement of the Super Bowl. And everybody there is engaged, involved, and having a great time. A lot of the robots are going to lose. All the kids have to win. And the way the kids win is they share their knowledge, they share their ideas, and they learn from each other. And the power of understanding technology is something that once they get a taste of it, they'll never give up. Before I had gotten to high school, I never would have imagined the possibility that I'd be taking mechatronics engineering at Kennesaw State University because of this. Going from being an intern to being an official employee here, it is just so exciting. Being around Dr. J is equivalent to being a kid in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. You get to absorb so much knowledge and so much information that you didn't even think was readily available like that. Being a part of this program and being exposed to these different type of mentors gave me confidence that I can use my brain to the fullest potential. We believe in you. The self-confidence is the key. Once you feel like you're capable of doing something, you're not gonna be intimidated about taking on tough problems and tough challenges. That self-confidence will carry you for the rest of your life. And I know that about each one of these kids. Underserved kids have an opportunity to come to a facility and be themselves and be great, which is not a gym. We don't have foosballs in here. We don't have pool tables. We have machines. But our kids are building and learning to an inventor's facility where it is mission control. They can do and see and be what Dr. Johnson is, and they have the opportunity through the program to make those dreams into reality and be great and really catapult yourself and your family into a better situation. And these students just becoming better citizens with their families and lifting our heads to the universe and realizing there's no limit has transformed each one of us into being winners about life. And that in itself is amazing. Robotic stimulation leads to inspired innovation. Team cooperation results in enthusiastic exploration. Exciting competition creates a STEM education. Imagination alive inside my mind. Hey, look at my new invention. What you see yeah, yeah, is what you'll be. If you see it, you can be it. Dream it and achieve it.